Hey, that is a funny way of starting a lecture. So, this again, once again, this is your professor, Dr. Cabrera. And our lesson for today would be about zoonotic infections, your Yersinia, Francisella, Pastorella, and Brucella. So, hold on tight, listen to this lecture. Okay, let's start with Yersinia. So, Yersinia is the, the because of what they call before the plague. The plague is an infection of the wild rodents and we are just uh, infected by the bites of the flea from the rodents. Uh, this is the cause of black death which caused uh, which claimed millions of life before in the olden times and our yes, senior test is can be identified as a non motile facultative, anaerobe, gram negative rod with striking bipolar staining. And the virulent strains of your senior usually produce your V and W antigens. So the, the incubation period of your senior is 2 to 7 days and usually will present with high grade fever and bubos. And bubos are painful and tender uh, lymphadenopathies, particularly in the groin and the axilla. And it can produce disseminated intravascular hypocoagulation, uh, which manifests as hypotension, altered mental status, and renal and cardiac failure. Fortunately, the treatment for your senior pestis is quite simple. You can give the drug of choice is leptomycin. And we can also give tetracycline as an alternative. So, here are the places where you, uh, your senior pestis is quite uh, endemic in the areas of India, Southeast Asia, especially in Vietnam in Africa and North and South America. The commonest vector for this uh, bacteria is the Bradley Synopsila Seopsis. But other fish may also transmit this infection. Now let's talk about the other members of the uh, genus Yersinia, your, the species Enterocolitica and Pseudotuberculosis. So these are all transmitted to humans via, and these are usually found in the intestinal tract of a variety of animals. Here you are seeing Enterocolitica is transmitted to humans through contamination of food, drink, or even fomites. The pseudotuberculosis are transmitted to humans through the feces of our domestic farm animals and birds. So how do we prevent and control the infection? Uh, contact with farm and domestic animal feces or maternal contaminated is at least the most common source of infection so we prevent by using protective gears and and uh, screening of, of course of uh, infected animals and also meat and dairy products can be a source of infection and next on the list is your francisella tuneresis wherein there are animal reservoirs and humans are infected by biting arthropods by direct contact with infected animal tissues, inhalation of oil, aerosols, or ingestion of contaminated food and water. The condition that, uh, that is produced with the infection of your Francisella tolerances is called your tularemia. So your Francisella tolerances are small gram negative cocobacillus. And we can have their, uh, the source for the specimens would be uh, the blood. And we can subject the blood for serologic testing. 
And you can also do culture from the lymph node, aspirates, bone marrow, the peripheral blood, hip tissue, and also biopsies. And now to continue uh, discussing pancicella tolerances, uh, your pancicella tolerances is basically quite uh, infectious agents, is quite highly infectious, and it causes several conditions. One of which is your ulcerative glandular tularemia, which is the most common type of uh, manifestation of this disease. This is acquired through abrasions of the skin, and later on, after two to six days of incubation, it will show inflammatory changes, and ulcerating papil will develop, and later on, there will be regional lymphadenopathies. And the lip nodes will enlarge and become necrotic and sometimes it may have uh, it can drain for several weeks the pneumonic tularemia is acquired through inhalation of infected aerosols and it causes peribronchial inflammation and localized pneumonitis There are the other uh, conditions, okay? your oculoglandular tularemia is, uh, is an infection wherein uh, an infected finger or droplet touches the conjunctiva and it causes oculoglandular uh, tularemia. Your glandular tularemia are just uh, infection of lymph nodes with no ulcers or draining sinuses. The oropharyngeal tularemia are the, uh, are the affectations of the oropharyngeal area and your typhoidal tularemia will usually manifest as septicemia. And mind you, Francisella tularensis is categorized as category A agent for bioterrorism. So these are the pictures uh, showing the different types of uh, tolera uh, infections or in of your francisella tolerances. So some of the fingers, okay, your glandular and your oculoglandular uh, manifestations. So again, just like your, your senior, it is treated with streptomycin or gentamicin, which is given for 10 days and rapid improvement is noted. And tetrapectin is also a, a good uh, alternative uh, drug, which are equally effective, but relapses usually will occur. And this is note 40. Francisella tularensis is resistant to all beta lactam antibiotics. That's why you can like test your penicillin, your cephalosporins, because these are all beta lactam antibiotics. Okay. Now let's talk about pasturella. Okay, pasturella. In reticus, uh, you will usually infect uh, the respiratory tract which are found in cattle, sheep, swine, horses, and fowl. Human infections are quite rare. Your uh, pasturera pneumotropica are found as a normal flora of the respiratory tract and gut of mice and rats. And it can cause pneumonia or sepsis when the host okay, of or of the host and few human infections have followed animal diets. So the most common presentation would be a history of animal bite. Later on it is followed by acute concept of redness and swelling and pain on the area of the bite. Pasturella Multosida is um, susceptible to most antibiotics. Fortunately, penicillin B is a drug of choice for such pets. 
and tetracyclines and fluoroconolones are good alternative drugs. Now let's talk about Brizella. Brizella uh, causes the condition called brucelliosis infection from in people as coming from cattle. It's called your Brucella abortus. If the infection comes from dog, the Brucella comes from pigs, Brucella suis, sheep and goats, that would be your Brucella militensis. And these are used with quite good direct contact with infected animals or consumption of unpasteurized or raw milk or cheese. General infection would be insidious, okay? It will be continuous or inter intermittent fever and will manifest as malay and may last for months if not treated adequately. So how do we prevent the avoid consumption of unpasteurized milk and milk products and also uh, prevent direct contact with animals like our cattle, goat, and sheep which are infected with brucella. So brucella are obligate parasites of the animals and humans. For humans, uh, the condition that it produces is called the brucelliosis, otherwise called the antidote fever or mouth fever. And this organism is killed by pasture, pasteurization of So the uh, main histologic reaction that is found in such infection would be proliferation of mononuclear cells, exudation of fibrin and coagulation necrosis and fibrosis and there would always be the presence of granulomas and these are in the granulomas, it contains epithelial and dying cells with central necrosis and peripheral fibrosis. There are different uh, species of your brucella, your abortus, which manifest as mild disease without superlative complications. It can also present with um, non cascading granulomas of the reticular intercellular system. Your brucella canis usually will cause mal disease and will usually infect dogs in the Philippines. Brucella suis can present as a chronic infection with superactive lesions and also there can be cachetting granulomas. Okay. Your brucella Militensis will tend to have a um, more acute and severe manifestation of the infection. So, how do you diagnose this infection? By blood culture, by biopsy for culture like uh, lymph nodes, bone integra, and serum for cellulogic testing. A culture of bone marrow and blood usually will isolate brucella. So how do we treat just like your the other uh, atopod or zone that infections we can treat them with tetracyclines or ampicillin or a combination of tetracycline like your doxycycline and either streptomycin for two to three weeks or defunctin for six weeks. So that ends my lecture folks. I hope uh, you subscribe and click the thumbs up button and I'll see you again on my next lecture.